Somebody has to get on Google and get to updating some old bad information they got on there. Because right now, when you search largest droughts, what comes up is the Dust Bowl, some drought in 1949 that lasted eight years, and then this drought from 1998 to 2014, the 21st century drought. And I'm not trying to downplay those droughts. I'm sure that was a, some long time for some people to be going without liquids. But you gotta bring up that the Sacramento Kings have been on a playoff drought since 2003. They haven't made the playoffs. They haven't touched the postseason. They haven't even made it to the play-in game yet! They haven't touched any of that since 2003. In a league where the majority of the teams make the playoffs. So Google right there, somebody's got to get to updating that because that's some bad information. That's some old information. Not that those aren't real droughts. The King's drought is just another level. All right, I got to take some water. Got to appreciate the liquids we have, man. I always tell y'all, man, some people only have solids. Appreciate all the liquids you have in your life. But time to get to talk about this King's team in particular because could they get into the playoffs before it hits the 20-year mark? The answer to that is yes, they could, but I'm saying no, and I don't even think they'll touch the play-in game this year. I like what the Kings did this offseason, though. I do like it. You know, I'm not so certain about Keegan Murray. I mean, I think he's... No, I am actually pretty certain about Keegan Murray. I think he's going to be a solid NBA player. I'm just not so certain if I would have taken him that high in the draft because I don't know if he jumps off the page to me, but he's a guy that knows how to play the game of basketball. Think Tobias Harris with a little better vision with a little better D. And that's a really stinking good player. Toby can get you 18 points a night. It's just he doesn't give you good defense, and he doesn't have good vision. But Keegan Murray, he has a good feel for it. Watch him in College of Wyoming. He can run the tranny a little bit, make passes a transition. He plays some decent defense. Probably never going to be all defensive team, but he can hold it down, P.O.P. So I like that draft pick, and I like what they did to add Kevin Herter. Kevin Herter is never as big on him as some Hawks fans are talking about some red velvet and all this, but a solid player. I think he's an upgrade over Dante DiVincenzo. And then Malachi Malik Monk. Malik Monk, that's a good pick. He's probably the, after LeBron James, he was the, probably the best player in the Lakers last year. So I like what they've done. It's just what's going against them is simply that there's so much talent in the league. Normally, I would say in the Western Conference, but go both conferences now. And, like, I, I don't want to spoil the teams I have coming up next for my season preview, but I'll just read out some of the teams that are on it in no order that I've still yet to mention. Uh, we got the Blazers, the Grizzlies, the Lakers, the Suns, and I'm sure some Kings fans are going to say, We're be we'll be better than the Blazers, but I like the Blazers this year. We'll get to that later. So for this Kings team, they have the chance to get into the playoffs, but I guess the main reason I would say no is, well, the main reason is what we talked about that they're just a clown franchise, and with them, I've just got to, when in doubt, I'm going to go with the, I'll believe it when I see it. And then the second part is the star player. I always liked Saboner. Saboner's good. Foxy, he's good. But when you talk about best player on a team, those are both whoever you want to say their best player is. They're both below average best players in the NBA. Because you look at the teams above them, they all have a better best player. Damian Lillard, if it comes down to it, I'm going to bet on him to find a way to get his team into the post, at least into the uh, play-in game. John Morant, I'm a little bit critical of him. him. I think he's a little overrated, but I'll still take him over anyone in the Kings. Suns, Devin Booker, you know, same thing. People are slandering him, but I'll still take over him over anyone in the Kings. So every team above them just has a better best player, and they have a better organization. So when it comes down to it, when in doubt, I can't roll my dice on those Kings to make the playoffs. But similar to what I've said with some teams, there's some teams where I'm like, nah, your team's cheeks. You're not, you're going nowhere. But there are some teams where I've already started to say, I have you low, but I could be wrong. This is probably the number one team because in a different NBA, I would be much more excited about this team. It just simply comes down to the other teams around them. But when you look at the way this roster is going to come together, they don't really have any holes anymore. I guess the one hole I would still have is they haven't really answered that center position. Rashawn Holmes is good, but I think ideally he's like a great backup center. And Alex Len isn't even a good backup center if you're going to have a below average starting center. So I think the center possession is, position is still a question mark, which is just going to lead to their defense still being a question mark. I mean, I like that they're not as small, I guess, with Davion Mitchell and De'Aaron Fox. It's not as as many you know, tiny guys. And Dave, Davion Mitchell, even at his size, is a great defender. 
But to be a good defense, especially with how terrible they've been defensively the last couple of seasons, I think you need that defensive guy. And if I were the Kings, I would have been looking to trade down in the draft and trade Mar- and get, pick up Mark Williams to be that anchor because, oh boy, is their defense trash. And although I like their offseason, I don't think they did enough to answer the defensive side and the center position, which I still think is pretty weak for them. Even though, I, like I said, I like Rashawn Holmes. So for the Kings this series, season... I have them as the 11th seed. I think their defense is still going to be bottom quarter of the league. I think the last couple, two years, it's been the worst team in the league defensively. I don't think they'll be the worst this year, but I think they're going to be like one of the 10 worst teams defensively. And I don't think offensively they have quite the superstar power to overcome that. Although I do think this will be the most fun Kings team of my lifetime. It's just, that's not saying that much. So I still think they'll be the 11th seed and miss the playoffs. But let me know what y'all think. Drop a comment, hit that like, and then subscribe. Please, yes, sir.